Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn three reliable methods to construct accurate ellipses in perspective. Let's get started. In our previous video, we covered all of the mind-bending complex rules of ellipses. So if you haven't seen ellipses in perspective yet, it may be good to start there first. But now we need a process to draw ellipses accurately in our perspective scenes. To begin, we need to study a flat circle first to understand how to translate that into perspective. We know a perfect circle will fit exactly in a perfect box. If we use the X trick from corner to corner to divide the box in half, notice that the circle touches the square at the center points here. These are called points of tangency, meaning they are tangent or touch the surrounding box. These four points of tangency show the widest parts of the circle, which will translate to our ellipse in perspective. To find more points, we need to subdivide again into 16 squares and then draw a diagonal through each of the four corners. Notice the circle lands just inside of the corner diagonal on the original extric line. Now we can use this information to divide our box in perspective and create the ellipse. To truly draw an accurate ellipse, we need to start with a perfect square plane in perspective. To see how to construct a perfect cube in perspective, click the link above. We need to start with the X trick to find the center and the points of tangency. Then divide into 16 squares and draw diagonals in the outer corners. Then mark the last points just inside the diagonals on the original X trick lines. Because we're drawing in perspective here, the back two points will be slightly closer to their diagonals than the front two points because of the principle of convergence. Now we have eight points to help us construct our ellipse. If we're drawing with traditional mediums, we can use French curves to connect these points together to form the ellipse. You simply turn the French curve to find a line that matches the arc between two points. Do this for each section, connecting the points together as you move around the box. It's important to make note that these points of tangency are the widest points of the circle in perspective, which will differ from the major and minor axis. The major and minor axis will be tilted as they go through the widest parts of the ellipse as a flat shape. The tilt of these axes is very hard to get right by eye, especially for a student new to perspective. This construction method will give us an ellipse correctly oriented to the perspective we have chosen. We can also see that the minor axis goes through the widest points of the ellipse, the center of the ellipse in perspective, and aims at the opposite vanishing point, which confirms our ellipse is correct in perspective. However, there's one obvious problem with this construction method. We had to guesstimate this point since it doesn't exactly touch the diagonal line, which leaves some margin for error. This is one of the faster techniques, and it is still a good way to construct an ellipse but if we need a more accurate approach, we can use the next technique. The next method also starts with the X trick to find the center of our square plane. After we use the X trick, we need to take a line from the top front corner through the center of the back to the bottom perspective line. This is the same technique as the repeating depth method discussed from a previous video. Next, we subdivide the front bottom corner of our plane to find its center. Then we draw a line from the point of repeated depth to the front edge of our box at the lower center point we just marked. Where this line intersects the farther original x trick line is a point that our ellipse will travel through. Now we carry this point around the inside of our box and where it crosses the other x trick lines are more points where the ellipse will travel through. These four points, plus our points of tangency, give us eight points that we know the ellipse will touch, making this a much more accurate approach than the previous method. If we check the ellipse, we see again that the major and minor axis are offset from the points of tangency. The minor axis goes through the widest parts of the ellipse and the center of the circle in perspective, and also aims at the opposite vanishing point, confirming our ellipse is the correct size and angle. The third technique might be the most visually confusing, but it will give us 12 total points our ellipse will touch, making it more accurate. Let's look again at the divisions on a flat circle. Like other methods, we start with the X trick to find the center and points of tangency. Then we subdivide again to get 16 squares. 
Next, we will focus on the outer rows. We draw a line from corner to corner on the upper section. Where the line intersects the outermost dividing line is a point our circle passes through, which means it will also be a point our ellipse passes through. We do this again on the other side of the same row and mark the point where it crosses the outer dividing line on that side. Then we repeat this in each of the outer sections. This will get confusing quick with all of these lines, so mark the points after each new line you draw. This gives us 12 points that our ellipse will pass through, making it a more accurate method. Now let's apply this in perspective with our perfect cube. First find the center and points of tangency, then divide into 16 squares. Next, draw lines corner to corner in the outer sections to find the other eight points. Mark each point as you go so you don't get overwhelmed with the number of lines. The points will always be closest to the outside edge of the plane. And here is our ellipse. Like before, we can check the ellipse by using the major and minor axis. If they are tipped, and the minor axis goes to the center point of the ellipse in perspective, and aims at the opposite vanishing point, then it is correct. Ellipses are a challenge, but with these three techniques, you can feel confident in constructing them in your scenes. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.